Continuing where we left off last time, in this week's screencast we'll be continuing web scraping, but this time we'll be using XPath and LXML. These are a bit more performant and a little bit less cumbersome than dealing with beautiful soup as we saw last time. We will continue with the example using the GitHub Explore page. We will make it a little bit faster and hopefully show you a better way to do your scraping moving forward. So let's get into it. So first things first, what is an XPath? So let's quickly take a look at our structure for our particular thing we were doing last time. So we have the heading selected here. What uh, XPath is, is where this particular div in this case is located in the HTML. So I just copied it. All that goes, it's using its ID currently now, and all it's saying is the ID of the div ID with trending repositories is where it will go. And if we start going deeper and deeper, so let's say we wanted to go into the tr trending heading and we wanted to get, for example, the ref here, we'd copy as XPath, paste that here. You'll see it goes, go into the H2, go into the span, go into the second span, go into the first href. And if I were to do the same thing here, it would go to the second span, second href. So all XPath is a way to determine the location of a particular HTML block. So as you can see, this becomes very useful when dealing with scraping. This allows us to specify one particular thing and use that particular identifier for different parts. So as you saw here, the only difference between this one and this one was the one here. So we're going to take advantage of that when we're taking apart our repo portion of the of the scraping portion as we did last time, but with XPath this time. So let's start off with our imports. We're first going to need requests in order to pull the page down. So we're going to import that. Next, we're going to need uh, string IO because LXML deals with files. And what string IO allows us to do is to have a file like interface when dealing with strings and not necessarily having to have files. So we have it like that. And then we're going to next need from LXML, we're going to need the parse functionality. So next, let's quickly pick out the pieces that we're going to need for our LXML here. So as you can see, we want to get, so we'll close that up now. We want to get inside that column. We want to find these LIs, which are all the particular pieces that we're interested in. So the first thing we want to find is to get the name of the particular one, for example. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy the XPath here and paste it in here just to make sure it actually finds what we're looking for. We'll see that that is the correct one to locate that for, but we're interested in the text here. And that's what's going to be the little thing you're going to need to add on to here. Now, this might necessarily work in all browsers when you do it in the search. But it happens to work in Chrome. They tend they tend to apply the text search. So what that slash does slash text in brackets does it's saying that href get me the text that it's enclosing. So this allows us to pick out uh, QHU 360 from this particular one. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that. We're gonna go ahead and copy that onto our thing. We're gonna call that the user. So we're gonna put that in the thing here. No, not that one, but we rather want our XPath. So, what's the matter there? Just give me a second. I'm gonna copy out the XPath. I'm gonna do it like that. Perfect. And then we're gonna go slash text, and that'll give us the text for the user. And then we're next we're gonna get the repo, which is just below it. There, we're going to copy the XPath. Slash text. Next, we need the stars. We need the forks. So let's quickly take a look at those. So those are the. So we're going to have to go into repo stats. We're going to have to go into this href here is the one we're looking for, and we're going to copy that XPath out. And that quickly identifies the stars there, or the stargazers. So we're going to copy that out. 
and that'll be the stargazers. And again, I keep doing the same thing. We want to copy the xpath. I'm going to copy that over. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to go slash text. And we're going to do the similar thing here, but which I know is the second li in that particular case. And there we have all the selectors for the particular pieces of information we need. Now, before when we were doing this with Beautiful Soup, it was a whole dance of, okay, find all the spans, then find the next thing, and do that. And that's how we went about it using Beautiful Soup. Although Beautiful Soup has ways to do with it, do the same thing with CSS selectors, but I wanted to show you the the, the difference between using XPaths and Beautiful Soup, and that's why I tended to go that way with it. So as you see here, these are all the allies for the particular group here. So if we go back to our page here, you'll see that the we're in the very first li. So when we close that up, very first li group here. So we have one, two, three, four of these allies. So we're in the first one here because we've been copying stuff out of here. We need to make this portion here a little bit dynamic. So we're gonna, what we're going to do is this. We're going to put in a couple of... I'm going to put the one back in. We're going to just do this real fast. Click, click, click. Uh, put this cursor in the wrong spot. I'm going to do, just real quick, put a percent D here, which will allow us to end up passing uh, LI in. So we'll, we'll iterate over an index. We move forward. And then we'll have each of those then look up the particular one that they're interested in. We can leave these because they're the position of the of the of the user in the repo and the forks on the stars. So let's get to pulling down our code and actually getting some results. So we're gonna call a method called get explore. This is going to pull down the page on GitHub. Simply using request, and that's just easy enough. Response equals requests, requests dot get. We're going to pass in an HTML page for that one. GitHub.com. GitHub.com slash explore slash. We are then going to return a string like uh, a string IO object which has response dot content and this mainly just for the, so allows us to ha handle file like object requests that xpath and parses are expecting so let's quickly write our parsed method so we're going to have uh, parse explore here it's going to take content which is the content uh, that we just pulled out of the the get explore page and then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go root is equal to parse we're going to parse the content and then we're going to go get root and that is allowing us to get the root of the html page we just passed in so we can then start doing operations on it once you have the root all we simply need to do is and as i said before how many do we have? How many allies do we have there? One, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna have five allies. So we're gonna need an index. So we're gonna go indexes is equal to list a list of one, two, th two, three, three, four, five. Those each of those accounting for one of those things and for index and in indexes. We will then have. We'll then need a trending repos list. List, we'll, we'll append the dictionary of items to. And then we'll have is equal to, we're going to append the dictionary here. So append. And this dictionary will contain the following things. It'll have a user, and then that will call get user with a root and an index. And we'll have repo. 
So I just fast forward a little bit there, just filled in the method. So all those those is just creates a dictionary with all those types and then adds it to the repository and returns the repositories. So the next thing we're gonna end up doing next is writing out each of these functions so they actually get a value and we're actually gonna end up dealing with the xpaths. So let's first write our get stars method. So we're gonna call this method get stars. Um, we already have a prototype interface for this one, so it's gonna take a root and it's gonna take an index. And with those two, it'll allow us to pinpoint a particular repository we're interested in and able to get its stars, forks, name, and repository name. So we're gonna call this get stars. And what we're first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go stars is equal to is equal to root. So the root object, xpath, and we're gonna take our stars xpath, and then we're going to then append the index to that so that this ends up being a value for the particular index we're running against. Once we have that, then we go stars is equal to this will return to us a list of of indexes which are space delimited. So in the way that GitHub has the particular thing laid out, as you'll see here in a second, um, you see if I expand this out and see that this is not a singular thing. So I, fl I collapsed that one earlier on when I told it to wrap. So you'll see that it's on multiple lines and what it'll do is it'll split them up. So all we have to end up doing is joining them and making sure that there are no commas or anything like that that'll screw up the conversion to the int. So we'll start off with an int conversion. We will then do a join of the lists that we get back and we're gonna join with nothing. And that, this simply takes, a, the join simply takes a list which will be stars. And we will replace the resulting list. So we will replace if we need to make sure there aren't any commas in the thing. So we'll replace any commas in the numbers that GitHub returns. And make sure they're removed. And that should give us the integer we're interested in. And we will return stars. And that's as complex as it gets. The other one for users, which we'll write next, get users, take a root index, we'll go user is equal to root xpath, and we'll use our user xpath. We will then add in the index. Once we have that, we're gonna go return user first element. So the thing you need to know with AlexML, everything it returns is a list because it can be grouped by all kinds of things. It's a pretty same default for the most part. It does, however, become, become very annoying when you're dealing with singular things when you're using the text-based lookup like we are here. But nonetheless, it's very easy to get around that. Simply index the first thing and return that. So now that we have everything written out, let's quickly give it a run and see where we're at. Um, we still need to write our main method, which brings it all together. So def main, which goes content is equal to explore page. Then we're going to call print parse explore and pass in the content. And this should give us... This name here is different. This should pretty much give us what we're looking for. So let's quickly run this Python scraping to the pi. Oh, there's an issue there. Failed to parse HTTP. Looks like we have a typo somewhere. Slash slash is what we're looking for. Let's go back here and run it. 
stars we typed in start instead of stars and this is what you get for writing a bunch of code and not running incrementally and there you have it we have our repo name our forks our users in one dictionary here and we have five of them hopefully I illustrated the use of XPath clearly here um, XPath allows you to pinpoint pieces of code that you want to look up this it's excellent for dealing with pages that have a lot of markup that you have to traverse um, you can also have these tests against them so when something breaks all you simply have to do is right click copy the thing out paste in the new XPath and it's up and running again it's a lot more flexible and faster to use XPath and hopefully you'll find it useful when you're doing your own web scraping products.